whose house is wasting more energy, yours or your neighbor's? I'm going to show you 37,949 ways to be able to figure it out. I'm a geographic information scientist. I'm a member of the Department of Geography at the University of Calgary and a member of the Institute for Sustainable Energy, Environment, and Economy. Part of the goal of what I'd like to be able to talk to you about is how to rethink the urban energy, uh, urban energy efficiency conversation. What is energy efficiency? Essentially, energy efficiency is doing the same amount of work with less energy. Well, that seems good. And urban energy efficiency then is going to be able to allow us to have the same resources that we want in our urban environments. Whoops, wrong way. <laughs> so what I'd like to talk to you about is my home. I came home one day. This was my home in 2007. It was a new home. I invested a lot of money in this home, my partner and I did. We bought energy efficient everything we could think of. Low flow toilets, low flush toilets. We bought uh, low E windows. We bought the whole gambit. And one day I came home and my house was cold. And I thought, why is my house cold? I've got all these energy efficient, the thermostat. No, nope, the thermostat, smart thermostat. It was perfect. Why is my house cold? I figured, well, to be cold means that all the energy, the heat must be leaving. Where is it leaving? I thought, well, I have no idea where it's leaving. Wouldn't it be great if I could pull out my iPhone, click on Google Maps, and up would come a picture like this from Street View showing me the energy leaving my house. But hold on, it's not just this picture. It's not a normal picture. It would be a picture showing me the heat leaving. It would be a picture that would be color-coded from red to blue, showing me where the energy was leaving. And it would have three circles around it, three hot spots showing me the hottest locations on my roof or my doors or my windows. It would be linked to some sort of service provider that would be able to help me to improve the energy efficiency of these devices. It would tell me how much it was costing to heat my home using different types of fuel, whether it came from wind or nuclear or coal or wherever it came from. It would tell me what would be my cost, and my cost would be my environmental costs as well as my, my, my financial costs. It would tell me what it would cost my greenhouse gases would be if I had a home that was using oil to, to generate my electricity, or coal versus some other form. And what if, what if it was as simple as clicking on a map in Google Maps, or your house in Google Maps, and it was free? Yeah, yeah, free, that's it. How do I do that? So in order to try to understand this, I needed to see what had been done in the past. What I began to realize is that Canada has some serious energy concerns. Over the last five years, urban energy demand in Canada has risen by nearly 20%. On average, buildings emit 35% of all Canadian greenhouse gases, 10% of airborne particulate matter, use 33% of Canada's total energy production, and consume 50% of Canada's natural resources, of which the majority are used where? In space and water heating. The good news is, is that space and water heating, we have solutions to improve the energy efficiency of these components. One very cold morning, I came outside. It was January. It was uh, about minus 31 degrees outside. And I realized that I was beholding in front of me the waste heat leaving the city of Calgary. Why is that important? It's because we don't usually get to see what waste heat looks like. It's invisible. The city of Calgary is really, really, in, they're doing a lot of work. What are they trying to do? As part of the Calgary Climate Change Accord, the Calgary Community Greenhouse Reduction Plan, and the 2020 City Sustainability Direction, the city of Calgary is seeking an implementation strategy to do what? To reduce greenhouse gas emissions and promote low carbon living and energy efficiency that is cost effective, actionable, and reaches a wide audience. But hold on, hold on. The city is a complex system. It's composed of individual parts. Hey, that's, that's us. We've already heard today that me is the most common word that's used. Why do I care about my city or my community? All I care about is myself. I'm not saying that personally, but in general. Well, one of the problems that we have about energy efficiency are the obstacles in the way. And what are these? The biggest obstacle in the way is a lack of interest. It's a lack of interest from the consumers or from the clients. Why? Well, it's the same old story. How do you engage in something that you cannot see? Who's seen greenhouse gases lately? Who, who, who's seen energy efficiency? We know what energy efficiency is. We've just talked about it. But what does it look like? Where is energy efficiency located? Now, we have some devices that allow us to have feedback. This is a, an e-monitor device hooked up to 24 circuits in my home. I get to see how my microwave is using electricity, my refrigerator, all the different electrical devices that I have hooked up to it. We know that from current uh, research, meaningful use of feedback enhances energy efficiency and significantly reduces energy consumption and the associated greenhouse gases. This is great. But what's meaningful? Meaningful to whom? Well, we have this idea about social norms. A lot of research has been done on behavioral sciences. And what have we learned? We've learned a lot of things. 
that you can't actually get energy efficiency to work unless you engage individuals. But the problem with individuals is they think a lot about themselves. In fact, the strange thing is, is that individuals tend to work as a large crowd, the normative behavior of the social, uh, uh, social uh, structures. Individuals are motivated much more by their perceptions of what other people do and find acceptable than they are by other factors such as the opportunity to save money or conserve resources, contrary even to their own perceptions of motivation. Now that struck me crazy. I thought, no way, I started the heat project. Oh, the project that I'm going to talk to you about because my house was cold and I wanted to figure a way to be able to stop that from being cold. I just came back from a very, an excellent energy conference in, in uh, Toronto. And there, there was a... I learned some very fascinating information. There was a, a survey done by thousands, over thousands of people in Canada, and I guess the, the question was, what is the number one reason to invest in a net zero home? Now, a net zero home is going to be a home that's going to be producing more energy than it's consuming. They tend to be a little bit more expensive at the moment, but what is the idea about it? What is the number one reason for, for having a net zero home? Anyone? Come on, where's the energy in the crowd? <laughs> Saving money. Saving the environment. Do you know what the number one reason was? To be able to tell their buddies when they go out for beer. It's bragging rights. Yeah, I'm driving a Prius and I got a net zero home. Life is good. <laughs> okay, okay. So, how can we motivate people to use this behavior? How can we do this? I'm a geographer, I'm interested in place and in space. What does energy efficiency look like? Where is energy efficiency located? Think about these things. Where is energy efficiency located? How can a homeowner know that their home is energy efficient, not the devices inside it, not my fridge with the energy guide or the energy star rating on it, but my house? How can a municipality know that their communities are energy efficient? And how can we engage citizen perception to motivate individuals towards energy efficient behavior? Well, I believe the solution that we've come up with is what is referred to as the HEAT Project. This is our website. When you log in, the HEAT Project provides you an opportunity to see the energy that's leaving your home. We have heat maps. You get to see the hottest location. We have hotspot maps. We have estimators that tell you how much energy you could be saving if you were to do some simple things, and they have greenhouse gas equivalents associated with it. How do we do it? We do it by allowing you to visualize where these components are. Our website is www.safeheat.co, co for collaboration, co for community, and co because com costs $25,000. <laughs> so to be able to put this together, what do we need? We need a data set. We need a source of information that's going to be able to provide us with heat. So we use a camera that's created in Calgary by a company called ITRIS just down the road from the university. It's called the TABI. It's a thermal airborne broadband imager. It looks at energy leaving your homes at five one hundredths of a degree Celsius. We fly it late at night on an aircraft, so hopefully you're asleep, you're not having giant big parties, but the most important part is, is that your home is in equilibrium with the environment. The energy that we see leaving your home is not going to be, comp uh, it's not going to be changed by the sun. It's going to be just the energy leaving your home. And the beauty of this is that we can fly the city of Calgary at about four and a half hours without having to stop for gas. It's a nighttime acquisition. Not only that, but we use geographic object-based image analysis. This image that you see in front of you, all the black areas are cool, and all of the white areas are hot. Where are the houses? They're the square shapes. But what if we add a few things to them? Poof, they begin to pop out. How can we take these things that pop out, associate attributes to them? So now it's a size and a shape, and we can see how it's changing over time. We can figure out its average temperature, its maximum and its minimum temperature. We also use GIS databases, polygons from the city of Calgary that give us information about how old the home is. When you log into the website, this is what you get. You find that we have a heat score. We've created a, a value that allows us to see the energy efficiency of your home. We rank it from 0 to 100. We want to reduce your heat score. It's red to blue. We want to be able to give you a, a low heat score. B shows you the spatial distribution of all the different houses within this area, this 37,949 at the moment. This is our phase two. C shows you all of the communities that we've been able to evaluate that are ranked. So the highest heat scores, we want to be able to have those lower. And then D shows you the spatial map that we've created from red to blue, showing you at a glance, if you're a municipal leader, where are your hot locations in the city. If you click on an individual community, like mine in Cougar Ridge, it brings you to Cougar Ridge, and we learn that 
we could probably save over $200,000 if we were to reduce the energy consumption, and that equates to about 1,275 1, tons of greenhouse gas equivalents. How do we do that? Well, the color-coded houses here are from hot to cold. In this case, almost everything in the community seems to be hot. If I click on this house here, this unfortunate fellow, he seems to have a heat score of 72. Well, hold on, that's me. My house is what? 32,955 times hot, well, it's not times hotter. My house is hotter than 32,955 homes. I'm not a bad person. I didn't ask to have this heat score, but this is my heat score. Based on the size of my home, its age, a whole host of other factors. But it shows me where my heat score is in relationship to my community. I'm a hot house in a, in a relatively warm community. When I click on the hot spots, I actually get to see the energy or the heat map of my home. If I was to push the little red button over here, it would be able to show me 12 different hot spots shown three at a time that go over the center of the house and around the edges of the home. If I wanted to be able to see what those things were and if they were really meaningful, I could click on this little guy and we end up with Google Street View. Google Street View now shows me that my hot areas are over an uninsulated garage and over a vestibule, an area where I came into my house that was cold when I first came in. Why was it cold? Because the energy is leaving. What has this thing done for me? Well, I'll tell you in a second. We also have an opportunity to be able to have an estimate of your energy consumption and your greenhouse gases that are associated with it if you do something very simple. We don't expect people to be able to reduce their energy consumption right down to zero or the wasted heat that's leaving. We want to be able to reduce the energy from the, maximum, the average temperature on their roof to a temperature value that's already on your roof, the minimum. These waste heat maps have been very powerful. For me, there have been a call for action. I borrowed a thermal camera and I was able to go to an area that was red where I have my low, low, low E triple pane windows that cost me a whole whack of cash. And I was able to find out that I have hot areas. In fact, I have one window that looks like it's bleeding. Upon further inspection, I found that there was a crack along the base. Looks like it's been smashed in by hailstorms. My area above my door uh, in, the, in the front of the house, what's wrong with that? That big red area around it? That's energy leaving around the edges of my house. A very quick, simple fix is going to be able to help solve that. But I know where it is now. Am I a bad person because I have a 72 heat score? No. That's the way it is. What can I do to reduce it? Now I can begin to see the things that I can do to reduce it. So who are the potential, uh, who are the potential users of this? Well, I think there's a lot of people. Homeowners, renters, building supervisors, anyone who's interested in improving the energy efficiency of the place that they dwell in. Contractors, identifying communities for marketing, marketing energy efficiency upgrades. Real estate agents that are seeking energy conscious clients or want to be able to sell their own home and have invested in their homes for energy efficiency. Service providers offering energy efficient solutions and construction companies verifying their build quality. Wouldn't it be great if your house gets built you're satisfied with it, and you get to see that it is indeed keeping you warm, that the product that has been generated is good. We also believe that there's opportunities for community engagement here. The, the heat scores are ranked for the individual communities, and we believe that these sort of data sets will be able to be useful to improve energy efficiency, low carbon community, and municipal ecological footprint programs. It's been said that the great killer app of energy use will be letting people know how they're doing relative to others. Why? Because comparison will change behaviors very quickly because nobody wants to be the outlying energy hog. I don't want to be it. I'm doing stuff about it right now. So this is our heat project. I invite you to be able to come and, come and visit it, take it for a test drive. Our mission, our mission is to show what ener urban energy efficiency looks like, where it's located, what it costs, and phase three will be what to do about it. We believe that if people could see the waste heat they generate, if they knew how much it costs financially and to the environment, that they would want to do something about it, and we want to show them how. Our vision, it's simple. We want to empower the urban energy efficiency movement by providing free, accurate, and regularly updated waste heat solutions for the world. So if you're interested in knowing whose house is wasting more heat, yours or your neighbors, I would invite you to come in today, log in to saveheat.co, and see if you're one of the 37,949 people that are there. And just remember, it's a free site, but to make it free, someone has to pay. Thank you.